Well, good morning. It's time once again for another edition of the House Whisperer Show on WWDB Talk 860. I'm Barry Reisman inviting you to stay tuned for expert advice about maintaining your house from the roof to the basement and everything in between. Featuring professional home inspector Jack Milne, who tells us that every house has a story. And Jack has a lot of stories to tell. Jack, uh, good morning. Welcome back to WWDB. Well, thank you, Barry. I hope everyone's enjoying their summer and uh, enjoying the heat. Uh, it seems like the humidity has finally kicked in. And uh, like I said a couple weeks ago, I think spring was all of maybe two days long. <laughs> so, um, so thinking of that and being a professional home inspector, I kind of joke with my clients and say, you know, during the winter I tend to gain weight and come summer I lose it all. Because uh, I spend a lot of time outdoors, but in, in particular, I spend a lot of times in places where people don't like to be, which is in the attic. And I think that's one of the reasons why we, we really stress good insulation and good ventilation practices, um, you know, for the safety and welfare of not only your, your family, but also the building. So I was going to take it an extra step today and talk about exterior claddings. Exterior cladding is what's on the outside of your home. So this can be wood, this can be vinyl, it can be aluminum, um, and it can be stucco and asbestos. So I'm going to touch on each of those today because I would think that most of us live in a home with one of these finishes. But before we kick in, I do want to thank my sponsors because, again, without them, I wouldn't be able to chat with you today. So Burr Exterminating, reach out to Rob Bruno. Uh, third generation wood destroying insect inspection company, but they, they also do radon testing as well. So uh, give them a jingle, 610-586-5640. Their website, I think, is today's yellow pages, which is boroughexterminating.com. Buckmont Inspections, Rob Bowie, located out of Sellersville, Pennsylvania, sewage control officer. He's been in this business for probably as long as I have, which is about 30 years. So anything that involves on-site sewage evaluation, testing, um, repair, replacement, reach out to Rob, 215-669-4213, and their website is BucksmontInspections.com. Pest Blaster out of Hamilton, New Jersey. Again, a second-generation company. They're, they got involved with radon, mold, wood-destroying insects. And one of the things that I, 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 I can't say I enjoy what they do, because I, I, I don't know if I'd want to do it myself, but that's pest removal. So if you have a critter and you're not sure what, what to do with it, you reach out to Pest Blaster. And if they've created any damage, they have the potential of fixing it, too. So their phone number is 215-295-5555. Their website, pestblaster.com. Brainflushgear.com, all I can say is, uh, you know, Kevin's on there. He's he's eclectic. He's got a hell of an imagination, and he makes clothing work. So if you're interested in anything that would be good for a family reunion to a bunch of old people like me getting on motorcycles, they can do it all. So contact at brainflushgear.com is their email. Uh, they will respond in kind. Uh, Tri-County Inspection Company, uh, of course, my company, I started back in 1985. We have four full-time home inspectors. Uh, their credentials are outstanding. Uh, I just found out the other day I got an A rating from Angie's List, and I find that amazing because I'm not a member, but I guess they like our service, so that's good. Um, you can reach out to us at 215-295-2030, the Lehigh Valley at 610-346-7880, uh, North Jersey, 609-882-5188, and 856-853-4224 for South Jersey. And of course, the website is tcinspect.com. The market is on fire, folks. We are averaging right now about 45 properties a week. Um, and I understand, Barry, even in your backyard, Cherry Hill's on fire. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They're they're selling. They're they're buying and they're selling. Yeah. So um, this is it's a great time. Uh, interest rates are still down, um, and prices are realistic. Uh, so I, I think you know I'm what I'm finding, Barry, is I'm uh, Tri County. We're doing a lot of first home buyers, and we're kind of doing the, the upper end. Uh, so we've been in some homes that are over multiple thousands of square feet, you know, 5,000 to 8,000. So, um, so it seems like all brackets are moving along. So 
Um, so neat stuff. So last week, uh, as you all know, I, 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 I dove into the email box, you know, for the seventh time. And, and you know, this week I did receive uh, some feedback as to the topics covered. And, and you know, having now about, I think, close to maybe 150 shows on the House Whisper, um, I ask that you go back to the website and, and that you revisit uh, some of the shows that we've done in the past because I think it's a great place to to glean information before you start any project. And so, um, and of course, what I like is the current shows or podcast 24/7 on www.dbam.com. So I always like to say, keep those emails coming to the House Whisper Show at gmail.com. So let's let's get started. Exterior claddings, how maintenance will keep your homes safe and warm. So we're going to start with wood, okay? We have all kinds of wood out there. We have beveled wood, um, and I think that was probably one of the most popular claddings until about the 1960s. So anything built prior to that, we would have um, eight-inch boards, four-inch boards. It could be cedar. It could be pine. Um, we could we have strange names like board and batten, ship lap, uh, T111, and you know all this, all these kind of uh, different styles uh, generate different architectural looks. So, for example, you could have horizontal beveled wood siding around the house, but when you approach the front door, you could have ship lap siding, or you could have the board and batten siding. It just offered a different uh, view and a different texture. So the, the thing is, is that with wood, you have to protect it from the UV rays of the sun, just like yourselves. So painting or staining should really be budgeted roughly every five to seven years, but again, it depends on sun exposure. Some sides of your home may be shaded, but it's going to be those sunny sides that can take a pounding. Cedar siding, I know, is really popular, and, and, and maybe not as much around here than in New England, but cedar siding was, was, had their time in like the 1950s, again, the early 1960s, and it's amazing the difference on a sunny side versus a shaded side. The shaded side can look brandy new, but on, on the sunny side, it tends to cup, it tends to split, it tends to uh, wear out more rapidly. So this is the purpose of the stain or the paint. You got to keep the wood protected. Now, um, if you if you plan to stain, um, the application does go quickly and without scraping. And I ask that you use an oil-based stain as it will absorb more into the wood and the grains and offer a greater protection than a water-based stain. Now, if your home is painted. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that today's lead laws are very strict. Uh, so as you scrape the old paint off the home and the paint, what I call shards, uh, start filtering into your flower beds and neighbor's yards, uh, it's got to be cleaned up thoroughly. Otherwise, what happens is the lead content that's found in the paint can get into the soil. It could work its way into the water supply or worse, you know, as the kids are playing in the dirt, which I know I did, the lead can affect your, their health. And uh, with lead, folks, the most hazardous time for a child is from incubation. How do you like that term, Barry? That's <laughs> from, a good one. Yep. <laughs> from the womb to five, okay? So if, if you're planning on doing anything, I'm just going to go on a tangent real quick. If you're going to do anything on the interior of your home, where you want to take down walls, scrape and paint the trim, etc. cetera, uh, your house was built prior to 1978. There will be lead-based paint in your, in your home, too. So that might be the day where you guys mask up as adults and you send the kids off to grandma's house, okay? So lead paint, lead paint manufacturing ceased in 1978, but you could still sell what was manufactured. And I typically find that paint has a shelf life of about three years. So by 1981, latex paint pretty well took over. So again, the issue really becomes if you, if you burnt off the, the lead paint or you scraped off the, the 
um, the, the layers until you got down to the raw wood, uh, this lead issue again can resurface. So, uh, folks, uh, heads up. Um, Barry, is it too soon to go to a commercial break before I talk about stucco? Ne- never, never too soon. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we'll do that. We'll take a break now and we'll come back and Stucco is next. Oro Exterminating has been specializing in wood destroying insect inspection and control for over 40 years, serving Philadelphia and the surrounding counties. All inspectors are state certified and ensure providing their clients with professional inspections and treatments. Oro not only performs conventional termite treatments, but also handles special services like historic buildings and homes with wells, creeks, or ponds. The client is assured that all treatments will be performed safely when you hire Boro to do the work. They also provide radon testing in their service area. Boro's full-time office staff is available to help you schedule an appointment. Just call 610-586-5640 or send an email request to boroinspects at verizon.net. That's 610-586-5640 or email at boroinspects at verizon.net. Specially created t-shirts by BrainPlushGear.com offer the extreme sports enthusiast an opportunity to have a clothing line available that suits their sport. BrainPlushGear.com understands that when we get the moment where we can jump on our motorcycles, wave runners, surfboards, snowmobiles, or skateboards, it can be priceless. They offer custom artwork including silk screening, transfers, and embroidery. Speak to one of their consultants today and they'll help you create your own brain flush visit brainflushgear.com or email them at contact at brainflushgear.com for your septic inspection and testing needs please consider bucks mod inspections they've been serving the bucks and montgomery county areas for over 15 years as members of the Pennsylvania Septage Management Association, the Pennsylvania Association of Sewage Enforcement Officers, and the Pennsylvania Association for Professional Soil Scientists, Bucksmont Inspections can inspect your existing septic system or test for your new septic system placement. Please call Rob Bowie at 215-669-4213 and say you heard their ad on the House Whisperer Show. Tri-County Inspection Company has been providing professional home inspections, commercial inspections, and historic property evaluations for over 30 years. For all of your real estate transactions, call Tri-County Inspections at 215-295-2030. For their New Jersey clientele, call 856-853-4224. Tri-County Inspection Company covers 13 counties serving both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. They have performed inspections for over 70,000 clients and are members of the American Society of Home Inspectors, as well as the Pennsylvania Home Inspectors Coalition. They are licensed in both Philadelphia and New Jersey. Call 215-295-2030 or 856-853-4224. As the temperatures gradually rise, so do the odds of all those filthy and unwanted critters invading your home like rodents, roaches, termites, and flies. Oh, my. This summer, if you want to feel safe and secure from a possible creeping, crawling disaster, do yourself a favor and call the exterminating experts at Pest Blaster for all your pest control needs, including tests for radon and mold. Please visit PestBlaster.com and you'll be sold. 215-295-5555. Okay, we're back with Jack, and you're listening to the House Whisperer Show on WWDB. And Jack, let's pick it up where we left off. I think you're going to talk about stucco. Yes, we are, Barry. And um, stucco has become a real issue uh, in the Northeast. And um, but uh, you know, with my little caveat, stucco over masonry has never been a problem, but over frame it can be. So if you reside in a stucco-clad home and you're starting to experience dark stains below windows where gutters abut stucco um, and, you know, stains by your masonry chimney where it abuts the the frame portion of the home, um, other points that I pick up are by the electric meter box or any other penetrations. Folks, this is not dirt or dust. 
it's water infiltration. And the sales of stucco homes have stalled or prices have been reduced because of water absorption. There's a, a term I'm going to use called substrate. Substrate is the wood that is installed over the studs as the house is being constructed. Now, plywood is much more durable than what we call oriented strand board, uh, which is particle board and held together with, with glues. And because of this water absorption, um, the, the, the house is, is going to, um, to almost, I'd use the word, disintegrate. Um, and so we have, to, we have to do some simple fixes first. And, and that would include the use of what we call kick-out flashings, recalking any penetration, be it a window, door, utility, uh, that comes through the cladding. But more complex fixes can include what we call the decladding or the removal of the stucco uh, from the substrate. Um, and sometimes the substrate has to be removed as well because we have to determine if you have wood rot there, has it gotten to the studs? Has it gotten into the insulation? Has it generated mold? And is the mold found on not only the insulation, but also the drywall? And sometimes the drywall has to be removed. So stucco's issues in the northeast part of the country has, has exceeded, I'm going to, it's a true number, $40 billion. I'll say it again, $40 billion. So if you have these stains that I've described, I'm going to ask that you do your homework now and, and talk to a stucco specialist. Now, I kind of like the use of thermography first. Uh, think of it, folks, if you're going to have surgery, uh, would you want your doctor to work from an x-ray or to just kind of dig in? So I like thermography because at least we can pinpoint where water absorption has occurred, and then they do something called deep probe testing, which is essentially a moisture meter that can measure the amount of moisture in the substrate. So depending on what the deep probe determines, it can determine your future. Uh, so I, I, I'm going to ask you that don't delay, because it can cost you much more in the future. And if your house was constructed between roughly 1990 uh, to 2007, these are the homes that have been most affected. And the reason why is that the builder did not put enough stucco on the wall in the first place. And stucco cladding on frame has to be at least from a half inch to five eighths of an inch thick, preferably up to three quarter. But what we've been finding is it's usually half inch down to three eighths. So it's not enough. So it's not enough to protect um, the felt paper and the substrate uh, from, from wood rot. So, again, take a look around your homes. If you live in a stucco community, take a look at your neighbor's homes. And if you see these stains on their house, chances are you're going to have it on your home too. So don't hide it. Uh, work on it. Repair it. So we've moved from stucco. Let's go to vinyl siding. Vinyl is final, as they say. Um, and I think uh, for our busy lifestyles today, uh, I think it's a good thing. The panels can, however, become unlocked between the first and second floors as the house goes through compression, and that's normal. Sometimes the very top panel up under your soffit can, can break loose too, and that's because it slipped under what we call soffit J. So it's not mechanically fastened, it's kind of held in place, but folks, these are very simple repairs. Um, they use a, a, a tool called a zipper tool, and it unlocks the panel, um, and, and, and at the same time can relock the panel. Now, my biggest advice on vinyl siding is do not put your grill too close to the plastic because you know what? It will melt. And if this has already happened to you guys, you only do it once and then you realize your mistake. But because vinyl siding can become unlocked, you can purchase new panels or sometimes you can, in quote, cheat and take the damaged panels and replace them um, where you, they, you may not see them, like behind a bush on the other side of the home or sometimes under your deck. So you can borrow or exchange the affected panels. Uh, but, again, these panels are readily available. If you can take a piece of it uh, to your roofing and siding um, local supplier, they'll be able to tell you if it's Revere, if it's um, uh, CertainTeed. There's about a half a dozen different manufacturers. 
uh, and but you'd have to buy a box. But um, the other thing that I find damages siding, vinyl siding, is the garden tool known as a weed whacker, uh, because they tend to shred the vinyl siding, and especially at corner posts. Uh, so I do find bottom panels in more homes have been damaged than than any other type of siding, and and fortunately. Um, you know, it's more of a visual than a structural, but at the same time, it also means that sometimes the uh, the grade or your soil level is too close to the vinyl siding. So as home inspectors, we look for at least a three to a four de- uh, inch gap between the grade and, and really, folks, any siding finish. Now, we're going to step back into the Wayback Machine, and we're going to talk about aluminum siding. Because aluminum siding was the break really between wood siding and and vinyl. So aluminum siding had to start pretty much in the mid-60s and stop somewhere in the mid to late 1980s. It's a hardy material but dense easily. It can also scratch from shrubs being too close. It can also oxidize from just age, creating white streaks on your brickwork or other masonry finishes. But... For today's buyers, the good news is it can be painted. So that gold, blue, yellow, or other ugly color that you're buying a house and it happens to be present can disappear with good primer and paint. But keep in mind, vinyl siding cannot be painted. So many times during the course of a home inspection, the client um, loves the home but hates the siding. So it does cost less to paint the home than to replace the siding. Um, And as I tell my clients, it's always one miracle at a time. But in the future, it can be removed, and you can re-insulate the wall and hang siding of your choice and texture. Um, And I think that's one of the reasons why vinyl is so popular, because you can get different looks. You can get beaded, you can do twin four, you can do eight inch, you can have materials that look like cedar. But getting back to aluminum, uh, when you move into that house and you have the hot summer days like we have now, when it expands and contracts, it sounds like a tin can. And it's always going to happen on the sunny side of the house, of course. Now, with aluminum siding, you do nail it tight to the stud, and that's why it pops. Vinyl siding, you actually hang it what we call loose. So the mechanic is going to nail vinyl siding to his fingertips so it can slide a little bit left and right. But if you have a vinyl-clad home and you see ripples in your vinyl siding, then it was nailed too tight. And that's an error, really, on on the mechanic. Uh, But once these waves occur, uh, unfortunately, they they can't really be corrected. Now, I'm going to move on to asbestos siding, because asbestos siding is the big A word. And And it kind of concerns a lot of people. Um, very popular siding, again, probably from the 1940s uh, to right about the 1980s. So I had it on my home that was built in 1968. So the question I always get, is it a health hazard on my home? And the answer is no. The product is 90% Portland cement and 10% asbestos fiber. It's strong and durable, but... It's funny, it can crack by a stone thrown from the lawnmower. It can hold a a coat of paint like iron, folks, 20, 25 years. It's not unusual. Uh, And it can be removed fairly easily to make window and door changes. Um, And that's what I did with my home. It It had offered great flexibility. But if you choose to install vinyl siding, do not go over asbestos siding. Okay, because as you're tacking this new material in over a somewhat fragile material, it's going to crack it, and it's going to give your home an uneven finish. There are some roofing and siding contractors out there that say, folks, it's it's an additional um, layer of insulation, and, folks, that's hockey pucks. Uh, So there's no truth to that rumor at all. If it is, it, it can be removed. It can be put into a typical dumpster for a small nominal fee, and it doesn't have to go to a Superfund site. So you can remove it. It gives you the benefit of re-insulating and then rehanging it with a new product. Unfortunately, what we call wavy asbestos siding is really now hard to find, as are what we call the horse feathers. I love that term. Horse feathers 
give your asbestos siding a beveled look. Um, and it, it's, it's kind of neat. So it's not real tight, but it gives you about a three, maybe a half inch to a three inch gap between your siding panels. So my advice is, if your neighbors are residing, grab their horse feathers and grab the other pieces that you may need, because I did. Um, and uh, again, it's it's uh, the only time I tell my clients that you want to wear a dust mask at a minimum or a respirator, preferably, is if you're going to cut it. And if you cut it, you can cut it with a masonry circular saw. Um, and at that time, you don't want to either breathe the asbestos fibers, nor would you want to breathe con, um, concrete dust either. So either way, you know, make sure that you cut down wind, <laughs> not towards your home when the windows are open. Folks, take good care of your home as it's taking care of you. Anytime that you see any needs of repair, it's better to do it before we get our, our, our harsh storms of the summer and it blows off. It's going to cost you a lot more to get it repaired or replaced. Now, my 1968 home had a combination of asbestos siding and brick, and so I made all the changes I needed uh, to, the, to my home, but in 1994, I reclad my home with a vinyl-coated aluminum siding, which has a, offers a really nice cedar grain. It has well worn well throughout the years. Of course, I have a few dents provided by my children. Um, but in closing, the exterior cladding of your home is what keeps your family protected from the elements. And if you take care of it, your house finish will take care of you. So until next week, please spend time with friends and family. And I look forward to talking to you next week on the House Whisperer Show. Always an interesting show. Always interesting topics uh, right here with the House Whisperer. And uh, please do tune in again next week for another edition of the House Whisperer Show with professional home inspector Jack Milne. And to listen to previous programs, or if you have any questions, visit thehousewhisperershow.com. This is Barry Reisman on WWDB Talk 860. Thank you so much for listening.